Did you audition uh, for any of the roles? Um, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> to be honest with you, like I said, that first audition, whatever it was, whatever role it was that got me on the show was what then led to me um, doing all the other characters. You know, I do remember once or twice them being like, hey, can you give this a shot and, and, and uh, try it? And I would do it. And then they'd be, you know, you could see them through the glass in the studio being like, I don't know, I think it's pretty good. Huh? All right, yeah, you got it, you got the job. You know, it was that, that quick, which isn't really the norm um, these days. Um, but again, that, that studio, the way they did it, they just churned out shows. Uh, they were non-union, which means they weren't, you know, SAG after jobs. It was just sort of like they paid by the hour. So if they had me for an hour and they could get me to do three or four different shows, they were happy to do it. You know, nowadays you have to get paid for each character that you do and each session that you do and things like that. But back then it was a free for all. So I did audition for a lot of them, but not, nothing stands out because it wasn't the, the normal protocol, you know. Uh, did you have any input on your character or the TV show? Sometimes, yeah. Um, you know, depending on if you're working with the, uh, you know, because sometimes when you're recording a session, you're there with a voice director um, and maybe one of the producers. Sometimes the whole creative team is there. So the, cr the creator of the show is there. And, and there's a lot more kind of like discussion into here's what I'm thinking you know, and you can say, all right, I understand that. When I was auditioning, I was thinking this, and they'll say like, yeah, yeah, run with that. A lot of times they also have a, you know, a very clear, concise idea as to what they want. Um, dialogue wise, especially for a show like, um, you know, I, I can't remember if Ninja Turtles was a dub, meaning it was originally recorded in Japanese and then we replaced the dialogue. But for a show like Pokemon, for example, which, which definitely was, you have a set amount of time that you have to say what the character says because you, you have what's called lip flap, where if the character is saying something in Japanese and it's only, hey, look over there, there's a Pokemon, you have to match that in English. So the writer or whoever translated the script has to try to fit about that many syllables. So there isn't a lot of wiggle room to be like, hey, look over there, there's a Pokemon that reminds me of the Pokemon that I had as a child. Oh, I'm so sad, I miss my Pokemon. You know, it has to be a sentence long. And so the same sort of thing goes with modern scripts, you know, for Amphibia, for example, they only have 15 seconds for a line because they have the whole show scripted out. Um, and so you can't really change it too much, but there is some room to, to have, hey, you know what, would it be funny if I did this or if I said this, or even if I just changed the inflection type of thing. And that's the, the best type of working relationship where you have some input and, and they listen to you and they let you have some creative uh, control over the character. And um, did you have a favorite episode in, from Turtles? Oh gosh, uh, I don't, unfortunately. Like I said, they, they all blend together in my mind um, just because it, I think back as the experience. I don't think back of, oh, look at that. that I remember that great episode I did. It just, I remember my years at, at Ninja Turtles and, and all those shows as one kind of happy memory. And um, who's your favorite person to work with on, on Team and T? Um, I, I remember always working with my buddy, Darren Dunstan. Darren, who played Splinter um, back then. And uh, I think I worked with Sam Regal back then too, who's a big voiceover guy now. Um, also on uh, Critical Role, which is a great um, role-playing show. Um, those are the, the memories I remember. Again, same thing with, with nowadays, even when you're on a show with people, you very rarely see them because you're in the studio by yourself. So they don't do a lot of group records these days where you get six people in a booth to record live. I'm, I'm a lot of times I'm going in and I'm, I'm hearing what the other person recorded, you know, yesterday, or a lot of times I, I'm just recording first and then somebody else will come in and record their parts. So you don't interact with a lot of people. It's more the, the, the voice directors and the engineers that you get to know because you're staring at them through the glass for an hour and a half or hearing them in your headphones as they say, no, that was terrible. Do that again. You know? So those are the people you get their relationships with, but, I'll be darned if I can remember a lot of them. I mean, this is, you know, 20 years ago, you're talking. Um, so. did, you, uh, did you watch the TV show at the time? Uh, I, don't, 
I don't think I did, to be honest with you. I mean, it, it was, you know, a, a kid's show geared towards kids, and I was in my 20s. I don't think I was watching the show. I, you know, after the fact, I certainly went back and, and watched some of the episodes that I did and was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But it's also cringe-inducing for me sometimes because I think about how bad I was and how much I had to learn. So it's sometimes painful to watch old things that I've done, you know? Um, because uh, the majority of your work was in season five and that, was, that season was delayed a few years, was you disappointed by that? Uh, no, because that, I, I honestly didn't even know, you know, because like I said, once you record it, it kind of goes away in your brain. You know, it's like, it's like anything else. I shoot, sometimes I shoot a TV show here and it won't come out for a year and a half. And you just sort of forget about it because that's the nature of this business. You have to move on to the next job. If I, if I record a voiceover and then say, oh, I can't wait for it to come out and, and just sit around and wait, it could be, especially like a video game or something that takes two years to, to come out or three years to animate, you know, you, you'd run out of money and you'd, you'd get kicked out of your house. So uh, it, it didn't affect me that it took a long time to come out because I, I didn't even think about it. I had already moved on to the next, the next job. You know what I mean? And um, um, what's your favorite uh, thing to work on um, as an actor? Uh, on on camera? Um, or any or anything really? Yeah. Um, I mean, e each each genre, each medium is fun for me. I started out as a stage actor, like most actors. I think that's where you first get your your first taste of it. Um, you know, um, I love doing voiceover. I I. I've always done characters and accents and even as a kid. And so it was something that sort of was very natural to me. Um, but there's nothing like being on set and, and doing things on camera either. Um, I was on a show last or two years ago. Gosh, see, there, there you go. I can't even remember how long ago I shot it uh, on Amazon called Tales from the Loop, which was like a sci-fi uh, futuristic kind of uh, dream world show. I can't even explain it, but that was just so much fun. I had got to be in Canada for a few weeks and shoot up there with amazing people. And, um, you know, it's fun to do things that you, uh, that are kind of new opportunities. And so, um, for, for 15 years, 20 years, I always had kind of like scruffy hair and a beard. And so I just played drug dealers and drug addicts and surfer dudes and all these things. And, as I've started to finally get a little bit older and have a little bit of gray in my beard and I started to play like police officers and like scientists and things that are new experiences for me. So that's really cool to, um, to kind of finally age out of the, the surfer dude, uh, you know, clueless husband in commercials. I, I, I've made a career out of just looking at the camera and going, huh? cause I, I have this, this dumbfound face, you know, um, so for me, I think that's the answer. For me, the, the, the most fun thing to do is new experiences and playing new types of characters because it's, it's breaking out of, like I said, what I've been kind of stuck doing for the past 15 or 20 years. Do you prefer to do uh, live action or TV shows? Uh, no, uh, no uh, like animation stuff. Um, well, they're, they're, they're two different worlds. Uh, it's, I mean, it's both, they're all acting, but I mean... It's certainly, you know, I, can, I go in and I do an hour in a studio and I've done a whole show. A TV show, I might be on set for a week and every morning I'm up at 5.30, I'm driving to set, I'm in hair and makeup, I'm waiting all day for them to shoot my one scene and then I go home, you know? So they're two completely different worlds. Um, I, I, I always will have a, a place in my heart for on-camera acting and, and stage acting, things like that. So I, I would say, that's more where my heart lies, but I love doing animation and voice. I mean, it's like I said, before I even knew I was an actor, I was doing impressions and voices as a kid just to be silly. So it is something that's sort of innate in, inside me. So it holds a special place for me. So it, it, to, to say one or the other is a favorite is not really fair. It's more, they're, they're so different and so unique that each experience is, is exciting, so. Sorry if that's a non-answer, but I love it all. That's okay. Uh, do you prefer to do um, TV shows or movies? Uh, well, just 
the, the, the sheer number of TV shows means that there's a lot more opportunities to do TV. I've only done a few movies in my life for whatever reason. Um, movies are, um, are cool, but you're, you're usually there for a day and then it's done, you know, or depending on how big the role is. Uh, TV is a little bit more of a, a family where you, you know, get to know the same people week after week or month after month or year after year, if you're lucky. Um, so, but, but they're pretty much the same experience. I mean, that, that is the same, you know, like I said, get up, hair and makeup, learn your, you know, go over your lines in your trailer, show up on set and do your job. So there's not much difference on the day when you're there. It's pretty much the same. Okay. Um, as a final question and a cl uh, cl a total classic uh, question, um, who is your favorite turtle? My favorite turtle? You know, <laughs> I remember when I was a when I was a kid in in elementary school, and I had a group of friends who we all pretended to be turtles, and uh, I wasn't the <laughs> I wasn't the most popular guy, so I didn't get first choice. I think everybody else got to be Leo and, and stuff. And I think I got stuck with Don. And by default, now I have a special place in my heart for Donatello because I feel like no one wants to be Donatello. He's just got the staff. Who cares about that? But I don't know. I've always, I've always had a place in my heart for him because of that. And maybe that's just my own personal insecurities coming through and being like, yeah, Donatello was cool. It's not the last choice. I wanted the bow staff. But... Um, but I mean, let's be let's be let's be honest. Leo is the coolest. He, you know, the swords are you can't beat that. But but I'll go with Donatello just because of my my roots and my history. Okay. Um. Well, thank you for doing this interview. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for having me on.